Hi, I'm Edwin Canastracci. I'm a screenwriter and movie fan. I'm here to talk about the screenwriting evolution of Jaws and talk about the screenwriters that were both credited and uncredited for that classic motion picture. As a lot of people might know, Jaws was originally a novel penned by novelist Peter Benchley. And Peter Benchley was a freelance writer struggling to support his wife and children in the early 70s. And he was having lunch with an editor at Doubleday, and he pitched him several ideas, most of which were nonfiction. But one idea was for a novel in which his idea was that there'd be a very large shark that terrorizes this resort town and wouldn't leave. The editor was very intrigued by that idea, and he said, yeah, give me a few pages. So Peter Benchley wrote a few pages of that. He gave it to the editor at Doubleday, who loved it and said, great. And they gave him an advance, and he was writing the novel Jaws. In 1973, before publication even, in 1973, Universal producers Richard D. Zanuck and David Brown got wind of the book via a article in Cosmopolitan, and they both read it over the weekend, and they both loved the book and were very excited and said, yeah, this would be a great movie. So they very quickly optioned the book. Per his contract, Peter Benchley was hired as the first writer to adapt his book. His first draft of the screenplay was very faithful to his novel, and that was the script that they went out with to directors. Eventually, Steven Spielberg came on board, and even though he loved the third act, the three men going out to hunt the shark, he was not as thrilled with the first half of the script, especially the second act, which he thought needed a lot of work. Peter Benchley did a couple drafts for Spielberg, made some changes per Spielberg's notes, but eventually decided that he wasn't going to be able to deliver the kind of characters, the likable characters, that Spielberg wanted. Steven Spielberg himself then did a pass, trying to find his way into the script, and he did create some set pieces, and one of them did make the movie. The scene with the two fishermen going out at night and on the pier, and the pier breaks off, the small pier, and then it comes around and chases one of them because the shark's underneath it. That's a Steven Spielberg written scene. To Spielberg's credit, he knew he needed a more skilled writer than him to get the script to where he needed it to be. Enter Howard Sackler. Howard Sackler did a very important draft of the script, even though he isn't credited. Howard Sackler was a very well-respected Tony and Pulitzer Prize-winning writer, most known for his play The Great White Hope, and he also wrote the screenplay for the 1970 film adaptation of A Great White Hope. But Howard Sackler only had a small window to do the writing. He said, I only have a limited time to write the script, so I don't want credit, but I'll come in here and I'll, I'll try to break the story for you, Stephen. And he did that. He went in there and he added very strong emotional through lines for the three leads. The two most important ones being Martin Brody's Fear of the Ocean and Quint's backstory involving the USS Indianapolis. After Sackler's draft, Stephen enlisted Sugarland Express writers Matthew Robbins and Hal Barwood to do another pass of the script. This was also uncredited. As this is all happening, they're launching into the production. Steven Spielberg casts a friend of his, Carl Gottlieb, from his TV days. Carl Gottlieb was a talented comedic performer and writer. Alongside Steve Martin, he had been a writer and performer on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. He also wrote for many other hit TV shows at that time period, including All in the Family, The Bob Newhart Show, and The Odd Couple. Steven Spielberg knew that Carl Gottlieb could help the cast with improvisations, especially during a lot of the crowd scenes involving the town people of Amity and the fishermen. So that's why initially he cast Carl Gottlieb as Harry Meadows, editor of the Amity newspaper. But as they got closer to production, Steven Spielberg still felt the script wasn't all the way there. Howard Sackler had helped break the story and created a second act that was closer to what Steven Spielberg wanted. And the emotional through lines were there for the main characters. However, he felt the characters still lacked humanity and the script overall lacked levity and humor. So with the clock ticking and the movie beginning production, Steven Spielberg enlists Carl Gottlieb while he's acting and he's on set to rewrite the script day by day, scene by scene, literally sometimes the night before they shot the scene. So Carl Gottlieb in his motel room was rewriting Jaws and in doing so, he inserted all the levity and humor and charm and likability factor for all the characters that was beforehand lacking. He also penned some of the film's most famous lines and definitely elevated the dialogue. Carl Gottlieb's contributions ended up so significant, he ended up being the only other writer besides Peter Benchley being credited for the film. And alongside Peter Benchley, to this day, he is the writer most associated with the film. 
in addition to Gottlieb and Spielberg interacting with actors and getting them to improv, and some of these most famous lines of the film were likewise improvisations from the actors made on set when they were shooting the film. In addition to this, there was the USS Indianapolis speech. Howard Sackler introduced the concept, but Spielberg always thought it should be a big soliloquy, and he enlisted another friend, screenwriter Don Melius, most famous for his writing on Apocalypse Now, the Dirty Harry films, and also co-writing and directing Conan the Barbarian. John Melius took the Indianapolis speech, which was just half a page long before, and turned it into a 10-page soliloquy. Spielberg read it and said, this is amazing, one of the most powerful things he's ever read, but it was too long, it was too much, it needed to be condensed. Fortunately for them, another member of the cast was also a talented writer, Robert Shaw, the actor who played Quint himself, unbeknownst to most people, was already a published novelist and playwright in England. So he knew his way around a phrase. So Robert Shaw volunteered to take the USS Indianapolis soliloquy and scale it down, scale it down to its most essential elements. And so he did. So this speech alone, the concept comes from Howard Sackler, John Milius wrote it, and then Robert Shaw revised it and streamlined it and then delivered it. And in doing so, created one of the most memorable and riveting scenes of the movie. And it's primarily dialogue driven. Isn't that great? So overall, Jaws is one of the greatest examples of collaboration in film. But just the script and the writing alone shows the power of collaboration that you can bring in all these various talented writers together who are all good at different things. And in doing so, they helped create one of the most beloved and popular movies of all time. So the next time you watch Jaws, know that in addition to Peter Benchley and Carl Gottlieb, there were many uncredited writers that helped them and helped Steven Spielberg craft this film to be the masterpiece it is. I'm Edwin Canis Tracy, and I'm out.